we're gonna proclaim the scriptures out loud together because there's just something about starting our time today uh, in the word together. So let's turn to the screen and read out of Isaiah together. For a child will be born for us, a son will be given to us, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. The dominion will be vast and its prosperity will never end. He will reign on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish and sustain it with justice and righteousness from now on and forever. The zeal of the Lord of armies will accomplish this. This is the word of the Lord. Let's worship this morning. H&W, we're so happy that you're here to worship with us. Let's just give glory to God because he's worthy and just celebrate this Advent season as we anticipate the coming of our Lord. sung joy to the world, right? 
I know, but those words never get old because that means we do have joy because the God of all creation has come to save us. His plan, earlier today, we were praying with Pastor Steve and he mentioned the word instead of save us, he said, God, it came to rescue us. And I love that, I love the picture of that. We needed rescue, amen? Amen. This next song says the same thing, says joy to the world because the Lord has come, but in a little bit of a different way that is just more specific. I love the words of the verse because it says that he came for us, the unbroken, the unholy, those who have lives that are messed up because we think God of all creation, right? We need to work on our lives and go ahead and clean everything up and get everything right before we can say, God, I'm ready to trust you now. God says, no, I came for the unholy. I came for the unworthy. How beautiful, how wonderful that the God of all creation wants to say, I came to earth because I wanted you to be with me. That's incredible to me. I mean, that's incredible to hear that from anybody, but to hear my creator say, I want you to be with me. I want you to be in my family. I love that. That's what this song says. And so, church, our response to that is worship. So like the chorus of this song says, Oh, come all you faithful, bow down before him. We will worship him this morning. Amen. Amen.
It's been so good to sing these songs together. As we sing these songs, we remember the goodness of our God who gave us Jesus. Uh, we've been going through a series called The Backwards Way of Jesus. And each week, we've been going through the life of Jesus getting closer and closer to his birth. And this series reached its climax on Christmas Eve as we lit the, the Christ candle as a church, but then also remembered the story of his birth. So today is sort of a, a bonus sermon in that series, if you will. Well, we're going to step into the heavenly courts and we're going to see today what was happening in heaven prior to the birth of Jesus. So if you would join me as we read from the gospel of John, John chapter one, starting in verse one. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were created through him. And apart from him, not one thing was created that has been created. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. This is the word of the Lord. I want to talk to you today about God's plan A, which is Jesus. I want you to understand today that on Christmas Day, as we gather to celebrate, that Jesus is supreme in ways that we might not even think about. And I want you to understand that Jesus is the best gift that we could have ever received on a day like today. So I want you to think for just a second, what's the best gift that you've ever received? Uh, what was it that you came down on Christmas morning as a kid, you opened it up, or maybe it was already there underneath the tree, and you knew that you, your wish had been explicitly heard. You're like, that is exactly what it is that I wanted. I want you to think about that gift for a moment, and then consider the fact that on Christmas, the tradition of gift giving that stems both from the wise men and also the tradition of St. Nicholas, that all of that is wrapped up in the fact that God gave us the best gift that we could ever get, and that gift comes in the person of Jesus. I want us to think about a few things that really send home for us how special the gift of Jesus is. So just a few things I want us to think about on this Christmas day. First of all, I want us to consider that Jesus has been the, the best gift, number one, for all time. Do you notice in verse one? In verse one, the Bible says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, in your version, in my version, the word, Word, is capitalized, and you may or may not know that that word, Word, is referring to a Greek concept, the concept of logos. Uh, now, this Greek concept of logos was something that was really a very deep philosophical term, and it carried all kinds of import. John was writing to a specific audience, and he wanted them to really understand that this wasn't just the tale of a prophet or a teacher, but was instead very God. So the thing that he wants us to recognize is that this word, this logos, this truth, this deep understanding, this deep meaning was with God from the very beginning and also was God. Here's the thing that I want you to hear. Jesus was not created. Jesus has always been. And on Christmas morning, the first thing that I want you to recognize is that Jesus has been the best gift we could ever have for all time. I talked about that best gift that you've ever received. If you're like me, you kind of want something new pretty much every Christmas. You know, the best gift that I got whenever I was seven or eight years old is not the gift that I wanted when I was 37 or 38 years old because our tastes change. We mature, we grow, but for whatever reason, Every desire in the human heart could be met through Jesus, and he has been the gift that God wanted to give from the very beginning. It's important for us to recognize that Jesus wasn't created, that Jesus was God, and that Jesus has been present in the Godhead, the language we use to talk about the Trinity, with God from the very beginning. God knew that the very best gift that we could receive was him his presence, and he has wanted to give us this living word, this truth for as long as we have existed and before we could even imagine existence, Jesus has been waiting to give himself to us. Jesus is the best gift for all time. Secondly, did you notice there in verse three, all things were created through him. So Jesus is the best gift for all time because Jesus has created all things, all things. 
Now, most of the time, whenever we think about Jesus, we don't really consider him being part of the creative process. For whatever reason, most of the time in our theological minds, I, we picture the idea of God the Father creating, but we don't really see Jesus involved in that process. But the Bible is clear that nothing has been created that Jesus did not fashion. Now, this is what I want us to talk about right now. That includes you. You were created by the very hands of Jesus. And if Jesus created you, he knows you better than you could even know yourself. Part of being a father is the fact that you know your kids. And it's kind of a weird experience to watch as your kids get older and you begin to see some of your own qualities showing up in your kids. I mean, in fact, there's times whenever Ben will start to talk and I'll go, wow, that sounds just like me whenever I was his age. Or I'll see a mannerism inside of Andrew or, or an expression and I'll go, wow, that's me. The thing that I want you to know is that from a parenting perspective, that's often really helpful because I'm able to discern what it is that they need parenting because I've lived with this quality or this emotion sometimes, an awareness of it for my entire life. Now consider the fact that Jesus did not just make the cypress trees and Jesus didn't just make the Gulf Shore, but Jesus also made you. And the expressions and the emotions and the affections and the desires that are within you, he knows those better than anyone else because his hands helped fashion you and create you. Jesus has been with God for all time, and he's the gift for all time because he created all things, including us. And since he fashioned us, he knows our hearts, he knows our hearts' desires, he knows the thing that we need to be satisfied, which leads me to then the next thing. Look with me in verse 4. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. Jesus is the best gift for all time because he created all things and because he wants to give us all life. Christmas is kind of an interesting holiday. Some of us today are celebrating. We're surrounded by friends and family. There's wrapping paper already on the floor. We can smell cinnamon rolls from the kitchen. We're going to go have a fantastic lunch or dinner later today with a, a massive group of family or friends. It's a day of celebration. But for others of us, it's a hard day. It's a day when we remember that we lost a loved one or we're by ourselves because for whatever reason, be that death or tragedy or distance, we're not with the people that we love. And it causes almost this sense of angst or reflection. Even some of us who are surrounded by the cacophony of family and friends will get to the end of the day and there's almost this letdown of saying, well, you know, is this it? It's just another day, another holiday. The truth of the matter is, is that the human heart gets excited about the proposition of exchanging presents and of having a fantastic meal, but there comes this point where we're never going to be satisfied with any of those things. It's why I wanted a different gift at 37 than I did whenever I was seven, and it's why next year I'll want something different, and it's why every single year we've always got these desires that are building up. But Jesus, because he's the gift for all time, who created all things, knows what every one of us, what all of us want. We all want a life. We want a life of purpose. We want a life of fellowship and communion with him. We want a life where we can sense that we have true meaning. We want a life where we're known and we can know others. We want a life knowing that we are completely beloved and accepted just the way we are. We want a life where we know that even if we were to make the most massive mistake that we could make, even today on Christmas Day, that there would be someone who would continue to receive us and bring us into the family and into the fold. That is the promise that Jesus gives us. He gives us the promise of life. Life is a beautiful gift that we read all about in the Gospel of John. Over and over we read, in fact, John 10.10, 10, one of the most important verses in the entire Gospel. Jesus says that he came to give us life, life to the full. Later we would read in the resurrection of Lazarus, Jesus say, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus wants you to have life. And he's not just talking existence. He's saying that he wants you to have a life that when you wake up every day, you know that you are loved and received and you can go through the entire day knowing that if everything else falls apart, you are 
completely beloved and received by the Father. He wants you to know that you can have a life of hope so that if something were to happen to you, you can know that you would step into eternity to be joined with him forever. This is the reason that Jesus crossed time and crossed history because the best gift of all time who created all things wants to give us all life because life is the only thing that will ever satisfy us. We're all craving it and he wants to give it to us. So how then did he do that? Well, skip down just a little bit. Verse 14. I love this verse. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus did this by satisfying that craving within us always. And he did that when he arrived in flesh. This is the thing that really we can't begin to wrap our minds around on Christmas Day, but it's the fact that God, Jesus, in flesh, moved into our world. I love the way that the message translation by Eugene Peterson puts it. The word became flesh and moved into the neighborhood. God did not want us to miss out on this great gift, so he drew near. He showed us exactly how to live. One of the fun things about parenting is that I love being able to teach my boys different activities. And so over the years, we've learned how, for instance, how to uh, put gas in the car or how to use a hammer or you know, even how to wash dishes or you know, take care of the dogs, these kinds of things. Whenever you sit side by side with your child and you say, okay, let me show you how to tie your shoes or let me show you how to uh, hold a fork and a knife. When you do that, they watch you and they start to copy. The thing that we recognize here is that God's plan for always was that Jesus would come into a space where we could see him, watch him, and know exactly what God wanted. There's no confusion anymore. We've been able to see what he wanted. It's been written down, and now we can have the assurance of how to receive this life. God wants to give you life today. He wants to give me life today, and it's always been his plan that he would become flesh, move into the neighborhood where we could see him, watch him, and know exactly what it is that we needed. God doesn't want you to be confused on Christmas Day. He wants you to know this, that he's always had the plan to give Jesus, that Jesus made everything, knows your longings, planned to give you life, and that he always planned to take on flesh, to draw up next to you, and to tell you that you're loved and you're received. The Bible tells us that after Jesus took on flesh and after he showed us this way to live, he died a sacrificial death on a cross so that we would understand how deep God's love for us is. This Jesus, who always planned to come and to show us life, also always knew that he would have to face a painful death so that the chasm between us, our sin, and the holiness of a righteous God could be crossed through the cross of Christ. This same Jesus also knew that he would have to descend to the grave, but then would one day raise in victory so that we could then experience beautiful life. Jesus literally, according to this, left heaven and came to earth, left earth, descended into the grave, came back from the grave, and then again ascended to the right hand of the Father, crossing incredible distances just so that we could have the great gift he wants to give us, the gift of life. So on this Christmas morning, here's what I want you to hear. Jesus is the gift that you definitely need and you could never live without. Jesus for all time. Jesus who created all things. Jesus who wants to give us all life. And Jesus who the plan was always that we would receive this gift is here for you. If you've heard this today and that's not something you're familiar with, here's what I would tell you. Join me in prayer and begin to surrender your life to Jesus right now. Trust in Christ. Hand your life over to him and say, Jesus, I want this kind of a life today. I want to believe that Jesus is indeed God's son. You want to believe that he's come for you and you want to believe that you're ready to turn your life over to him. If you've already placed your faith in Jesus, then on this Christmas day, celebrate and remember the good gift and step into the life that God came to give you. 
I'll see you back here on January 1st, New Year's Day, as we prepare to start 2023 together, living this new life in Christ as we walk forward into a new year with the promise of a God who always had a plan and his plan was always to come in the person of Jesus. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for your goodness. And God, we thank you that you always had a plan to give us Jesus. Lord, we pray. Let us hear from you in this moment. If we have yet to say yes to you, that we would sense your spirit speaking to us and we would surrender our hearts even now, that we would trust you and that we would give our lives to you. Father, if we have already done so, that we would lean into the life that you've given. God, that we would remember that life and that we would live it to the full in the promise of the purpose, meaning, hope, and acceptance that we've received in Jesus. Father, in all these things, we give you glory. and all of these things, we, we surrender to you. And God, we pray and we ask this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. If you just gave your life to Jesus for the first time, if you just surrendered to him, then I want to say congratulations and I want to encourage you. Join me back here on New Year's Day or if for some reason you're not in Houston, you're somewhere else, then reach out to us through our website, hnw.org, and let us know that you've given your heart and your life to Jesus. We'd love to celebrate with you, send you a Bible and any other tools that you might need. If you're already a part of our church and you just had a great moment of remembering what God is doing for you, then commit to be back with us as we start a new year, and we'll see you back here on New Year's Day. Have a great day, everyone. Celebrate together and have a very Merry Christmas.